hello all of you okay so nice to see you all back so today we are starting with uh, the optional paper and you all know that optional plays such a mighty important role in your exam 500 marks 250 marks paper one and 250 marks paper two so today i'm not uh, exactly teaching you anything uh, i'll try to start political theory but then i have to introduce the subject and uh, the syllabus as well because we have to spend a lot of time with each other you have to spend a lot of time studying this very subject so there has to be certain guidelines that you are supposed to follow very very religiously else what happens that preparation goes into hayward direction and it's not uh, something which i would like to happen so please uh, today allow me this uh, introduction and orientation to your subject and your syllabus both things are very very important it's important. We all know that it plays a very important role, 500 marks, political science and international relations. Uh, I just want to know anyone who has studied this subject before, anyone who is a graduate in political science or a master's degree holder, no political scientist over here. See, I, I always ask this before starting my batch because uh, I prefer if there are no people from political science in the background. Not because I don't like people who are into political science. I love this subject. It's my subject. But then it's very easy to write on a clean slate. I hope all of you agree to this. So it's really heartening to know that all of you are beginners because it will make my task very easy. As a teacher, as a guide, it will make my task very easy with all of you. Secondly, uh, I guess most of you are from technical background, right? Uh, probably uh, BTEC or B. Anyone who is from humanities over here? Okay, so much. Okay, okay, fair enough. No issues. Ah, there are a few people from humanity. Hari Krishna, Suman Kasturi. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me start with what this subject is all about. And uh, so this subject, political science and international relations, uh, have you seen the syllabus, all of you? Or uh, if you have a copy uh, of your syllabus, that would be good. If not, then nothing to worry about. At the moment, how many of you how many are having the hard copy. If you don't have nothing to worry about because I have it with me, nothing. I'll, I'll read out everything, nothing to worry about. See, first thing, political science is, uh, wh what, what, when I say this to you, political science, there are different interpretations of this subject and different uh, things can be assimilated into political science. The reason this subject is doing very good in uh, civil services exam is because you study this subject irrespective of whatever optional you choose. Why I'm saying this? I just want to emphasize what this, uh, the importance of this subject for your exam. And then I'll come to the introduction of subject later on to the syllabus, the four parts. I have divided syllabus into four parts for our convenience, all of us. So uh, even if you study any other optional, you have to study Indian polity in paper two, Indian polity and constitution, the governance part. Now, there is nothing in paper two general studies that we do not cover in political science. I repeat, there is nothing in general studies paper two that we do not cover in political science. So in a way, if you were to make a Venn diagram, I hope all of you understand what is a Venn diagram. Set theory, you all have gone through, right? That's, uh, when I say Venn diagram, it makes sense to you, right? So when you make a Venn diagram, there would be a lot of overlapping with political science. Okay, entire paper two, paper two consists of Indian polity, constitution, governance and international relations, which you will be quizzed upon for 250 marks in your general studies. So that 250 marks is already here. In fact, more details are here. I always say political science is not Lakshmi Khan. It's Lakshmi Khan plus, plus, plus. There are several other things that you study that you do not cover in your Lakshmi Khan, right? Of course, Indian constitution, you have to study again here into great details more than what you study in your general studies so the subject you are studying irrespective of the option you are choosing so what would be a pragmatic choice again i've used this word pragmatic what is pragmatic whatever gives you benefit do it entire american foreign policy revolves around this word pragmatic we'll see that when we'll discuss something related to IR also. So making a pragmatic choice to study political science as an optional will give you something uh, really it's worth it. it. It will reap rich dividends for you. Then you have to study, uh, you have to appear for an essay paper. Now again, essay paper is of 250 marks and uh, off late, uh, I'm just uh, indulging into some uh, 
discussion regarding your exam uh, i should do that right i think i should i hope you all are okay with that right hmm. so so what happens here is that uh, yes yes i got all the affirmations from you people three to four affirmations so what happens is uh, if you see that trend in your exam now they are dividing essay paper into two parts earlier what was the pattern that uh, you write one topic and entire 250 marks would be distributed on that one topic so people went on writing at length something like a mini novel right now thousand uh, to twelve hundred words two topic paper a and paper b in essay as well every year mark my words every year and you can empirically verify this it's not like i'm saying it you can do it for yourself and check this out anyone who studies political science will have an edge when he appears for the essay paper because one or the other topic more than one topic is related to political science and international relations so it makes sense it makes sense for civil services aspirant to study this subject this was the utility part because how useful it would be i showed you how it is connected to your general studies how it is connected to your essay now the final stage of your exam the interview part there is no interview where they don't ask you question regarding international relations and uh, quality part every interview has one or the two question related to these things international relations because something or the other is going around in the world and that is important so upsc quizzes you every and again quality part and the uh, governance part because there are so many welfare schemes so many things related to governance that is happening right now in front of us unfolding in front of us so again that becomes very very important so it makes sense to study political science pragmatically now secondly how do we study this subject and uh, whenever i uh, different places when i start this subject this is how i start the first thing that students ask sir tell us the books i'm wondering why <laughs> anyone from you has not asked or was this question on way sources books notes newspapers right are you all wondering about that as well yes i can read minds i have been doing this for last 7 years sir 7 to 8 years now all of you would have asked i know this all of you would have asked the thing is see i can tell you a lot of books the titles you have not even heard of right but uh, that's not the purpose of my class when you are attending my class you have to just focus on what we discuss here and there will be regular updates from my side okay i'll be sending you the pdfs just go through that nothing more is required don't read books as of now in fact i would suggest you do not read books at all but then you will say sir how is that possible because whenever i say this students panic bina book padhe kaise hoga is what i hear in delhi so there is some psychological connect with aspirants and books so again i would say that you don't have to read books even still if you want to read any book do it very very selectively do not try to read book from alpha to omega from first page to the last page see no book is written for your exam in fact anyone who has claimed to write a book for your exam has a uh, i wanted to avoid this but then has copied it from various sources is what the truth is so avoid reading book because uh, they are full of jargons and says and kal heavy lip words are there they are not coherent your exam is coherent how i shall explain you within a moment but then uh, primary primarily pay attention to the lectures that uh, read the materials that are sent to you on your telegram channel and maybe on your gmail yes so read that hmm. so coming back to what we were talking about that uh, how do you get this assurance hmm. uh, how do you get this assurance that you are going on the right track and what i have told you that you do not uh, need not study for your notes and lecture would suffice uh, the sure test for this uh, uh fact is that you just see the previous year questions trust me if i complete a topic if we complete a topic something read up read that if you are seeing the previous year papers okay so we complete western political thought uh please if you can mute your mics all of you so if you can uh, suppose i i discuss with you socrates and from 2000 again i am repeating from 2008 why 2000 because the syllabus was changed in 2008 so do not uh, go before 2008 that would be useless so from 2008 till 2019 more than 10 years you see what upsc has asked on socrates and then you see whether you are able to write a meaningful answer or not okay from whatever we have discussed and whatever has been provided to you in the forms of pdf if that is 
done there is no other there is a first saying in sanskrit pratyaksh kim pramanam what is happening in front of our eyes does not need any evidence right so if you are able to do that if you are able to address all the questions if you know what is the content of this question after this and after reading the material you know that your preparation going on right track correct so do the second thing that i want to tell all of you that uh, what is political science if i if i can get one line answer from any of you uh, what is political science please give it a try what comes to your mind when i say political science anyone see there has to be interaction in political science it cannot be a monologue from my end only things happened around us daily is what santosh says understanding the politics of the world and their evolution is what krishna kan says and uh, hari says a division of social science study of mass human association sarat says archita says science taking care of need of people suman says the way a nation is run harsh s says and political activities behavior governance vaishnavi constitution vaishnavi it's actually uh, much more than constitution aditya says the international relations and the things that are related within the country and between the states sharad says science for the betterment of governance anirudh says studies of politics hemant study of rulers and the ruled vishnu theory on organizing government anusha government system and policies uh, sweta says understanding the politics of a country to govern a country ram charan says politics plus governance plus constitution plus political activities hey, you have tried to be very holistic ram okay now first of all let me burst some myths and uh, the thing is there is nothing uh, there is no science in political science it's actually the case what is science if i ask you science is the knowledge of anything in a systematic and true manner right systematic and true manner systematic means there is a pattern to it true that it it holds true it is actually happening so how do we establish that uh, the range of agni missile is 7000 kilometers is when it fires maybe 30 to 40 agni missiles right and then sees what is the distance that they cover as to then this is how it happens and after 40th missile is fired the 41st missile also covers more or less the same distance then we can say with surety that the range of agni missile is 1000 kilometers correct i hope this is clear to all of you so what happens in science true and systematic knowledge is there through experiments through empiric empirical evidence empirical means your sense organs are involved there is something in empiricism that we shall see uh, in uh, paper 1 itself it means your sense organs your perceptory organs are involved to it what you see what you hear what you feel what you smell what you touch tells you this your sense organs the five sense organs that we have they tell us that these things are happening around us and there is a pattern to it it is happening and how how long the knowledge holds true until unless some better scientific knowledge does not invalidate itself right like earth is the center and entire universe revolves around this is what the church used to say it took someone like galileo galilei to announce that it's the other way around and now it's established fact right so science talks about objective truth consider your preliminary exam it's an objective paper the answer is in your question paper itself four options and there is one answer so whether you are appearing in hyderabad or in delhi the answer would be same now this is objectivity okay this is what is called objectivity this is what science say, does objective truths whether you are there or here or anywhere on this planet scientific principles would hold true right the law of gravitation would be the same the principles related to force acceleration and mass and so on and so forth relativity heisenberg everything would remain the same okay that is what science is objective truths however one of you rightly said that is a part of social science social studies or social science deals with behaviors right behaviors so there are no objective truths in social science there are only subjective analysis there are only subjective analysis suppose i ask you how is the performance of modi government from 2014 to 2019 modi one you know your answer would vary depending on your personal biases prejudices 
and whatever you have learned from whatever sources you're reading your interaction with any other person or whatever you have observed and it would vary from people to people we are currently having 35 people if not 35 there can be a dozen answers to this question right what is the performance of modi government in his first term from good to better to bad to worse to best right depending on how you perceive it so this is what social studies is subjective analysis so political science is at the forefront we have to talk about this subject because what happens uh, people uh, i'll come to this part later but please try to understand that social science is not science we are not dealing with objective truths there is a human behavior attached and human behavior is so so unpredictable it is it is uh, whatever we see whatever we say whatever we uh, favor is a result of our biases yahan tak clear hai all of you understood this the difference between science and social science and how political science is a part of social science any questions still here so now the question is now the second my second question is that how do you write a good answer in a subject which has so much of contradictions or subjectivity in it so if you are if you are asked a question right uh, and again uh, this our subject political science is an amalgamation of many subjects here you will study constitution here you will study international relations here you will study economics okay you will see uh, concept of gdp and economic cycles coming here okay you will study about laissez faire also i hope you have heard this term laissez faire how many of you know the meaning of this term laissez faire i guess all of you do leave us alone right so you will see geography here you will see the application of geography here you will see a bit of sociology over here and again history is here political does not operate in isolation there is a history to every theory that has been developed remember the constitution of india that is available to us in the form that it is currently right now it took 3 years to frame that and it has been uh, inspired by different sources inspired from different sources actually so whatever theories are available to us human kind mankind has taken lot of time to give it to us in the present form that it is so please cherish these things okay the people who came before us have took took lot of effort into formulating these things so of course there is history you cannot study political ideology before you know the history to it so things are very very interconnected and this will come very handy when you will further advance into your general studies like what i am saying like i cannot start a political ideology before i cover what happened in medieval europe or to in ancient europe so these things you have to study somewhere in your general studies so studying political science as an optional will broaden your horizons not only in life but also for exam and here i will be pragmatic i will deal strictly with exam because the only objective of the classes are that you get a very good marks a good rank in your civil services exam i am not concerned about uh, what horizons and what learnings life lessons you that would be an offshoot that's not the uh, main main purpose of the classes the only purpose is to enable you to get good marks in your main exam and to put it bluntly when you come out of your main exam you should not abuse me this is how what i tell my students the day you write your main exam you should not abuse the shekhar you should rather praise me that is the purpose of my classes putting it very bluntly in front of all of you so next thing that i would ask like to divulge into that how do you write something which varies from person to person and score good marks into it okay you know that a person would rate any answer would write something and sources before going to that sources uh, there are something that i would like you to note down i hope all of you are carrying pen or paper or uh, if not then i'll send it in the group uh, all of you are already reading newspapers uh, i see uh, uh, ram sir giving uh, articles hindu articles into your uh, groups all of you are reading that uh, i would add here a bit please uh, you are reading the hindu it's very good i'm not stopping you from reading the hindu but uh, it would be good if you read the indian express as well now the news would remain same right news would remain same if there are if the uh, let me bring a good news if the recovery rate of india 
is 70% from corona indian express would also write the same thing hindu would also write the same thing objectivity right but the interpretation of news might differ so news would be same they don't create news they print news and uh, it's up to us to read that just read there is this page uh, the indian express has a i guess a agreement or some partnership with the economist magazine now why i am asking you to read uh, don't read economist magazine no not for you but they publish one page on weekdays there is entire page anyone who has seen that indian express ka wo economist page i hope uh, some of you might have seen that there is one page lifted from economist magazine in the indian express have you seen that uh, uh, it have they are, they are publishing it on weekdays so if you read that because in your main exam uh, in your interview uh, one person was asked from political science background that why is that uh, most of the countries when they progress they move from uh, uh, like uh, when democracy depends uh agriculture sector is removed by industries and services why is china an exception this was asked in 2018 interview to one of the political science aspirant that was straight away from that article itself so very carefully i am saying you that please read try to read it in express and uh, either of the two will suffice if you read that that would be better another thing that i would like you to stick with is uh, rajya sabha tv how many of you watch it the debates on rajya sabha tv hari only hari and subana rest of you yeah the big picture frank rosan parera <laughs> right the guy ha ram please watch ram charan so please uh, make this a habit big picture rajya sabha tv there are other programs also but one of one will be all right then there uh, please listen to all india radio at 9 pm now why i am saying all this because these things will reinforce whatever there there are panel discussion if you see rajya sabha tv then experts in the, from their respective field come on the rajya sabha tv and they examine an issue based on several angles like i will tell you something uh today i got to learn that uh, prashant bhushan will be sentenced minimum 6 months in contempt of court case did you watch this did you uh, do you know this so now contempt of court becomes important for you that what exactly is the type of court what are the provisions so there will be three legal illuminaries debating this topic in a day or two on rajya sabha tv so you need to listen to all the views and then develop a broader understanding of yourself for yourself right so it would come very handy this is something that you don't get in your books of course i'll be quoting these things i'll be letting you uh, i will make you aware about these things but you need to work a bit on your own as well so only two things newspaper uh, rajya sabha tv and uh, yojana i guess all of you are but that's not specifically for political science that for general studies as well so these are the two things that i expect you to do uh, newspaper and rajya sabha tv debates nothing beyond that and if you really want that, that there has to be some book you feel deficient that you feel your preparation is incomplete you need a book there is no better book for a paper one other than andrew haywood it's the bible of political science anyone who has read it or heard the name andrew haywood ideologies anyone who has read it none of you who need also i was uh, i was uh, uh, okay you guys have heard about it few of you nihar and subana have heard see again it's not a compulsion it's an option and i would be very more than happy if you don't read anything okay so Andrew Haywood is the best book, but the first of you want to say something. So the language is a bit uh, typical, tough, would be tough for you to understand. We will be. I'll keep quoting from that book. Nothing to worry about. That your materials are uh, the PDFs and the slides that I have prepared. I uh, have taken help from various sources, including this book. So just go through the PD, uh, P, PPTs that I'll share with you all. and the pdf files that you only provided with that would be enough again for uh, paper, again paper one is divided into two parts part a and part b right now part a consists of your ideologies thinkers political theory there are 10 to 11 topics there paper b is what i what we call here in delhi igp indian government and politics and that is uh, more than lakshmikan it actually starts with your history okay i'll just introduce you the entire paper one 
uh, it actually starts with history what was happening into during the freedom movement and how the constitution was actually shaped and uh, we will often refer to the constituent assembly debates that uh, have shaped the constitution if i tell you that socialist and secular words were added by mrs indira gandhi and they were not there in the original constitution uh, i hope you remember this so th- th- there is a history to it there is a constituent assembly relevant debate to it uh someone proposed this and it was vehemently discussed and then it was decided that no socialist and secular should not be in the constitution again uh, we all know about the 42nd amendment and uh, what the apex court ruled uh, about it so every provision everything that how the constitution the making of the constitution is what your syllabus says the making of the constitution so making of the constitution is not the final constitution how it was shaped on then of course uh, everything that you study in your general studies a bit more detail understanding is needed here like uh, you will be asked views on judiciary now it's a very tight road to walk when you are asked to write up on indian judiciary you cannot be very critical you cannot be very supportive of it also so again balanced balanced answers are uh, needed here so moving on from uh, all the paper one most important part most important part in your entire political science is paper one part a why so even it will come very handy in your paper to international relations the political theories the ideologies the thinkers that you read here you have to connect them with your ir as well okay see ir is a very dynamic topic ir changes with one modi ji goes for a flight and relations change right it's not the same so you have to connect it with theories to get good marks okay now one more thing that there is so much of politics happening political uh, events happening around us so suppose uh, there is this concept of philosopher king now can someone tell me who has talked about philosopher king anyone okay plato sam can you explain in a line what is philosopher king of plato if you can try please person who has reason in as his soul okay we have not studied this so let us not get confused just to tell you just to give you an example and elaboration that uh, raj rishi okay hmm. your name is nobody you need to choose a name so uh, if you we are talking about uh, no, just uh, to give uh, make you understand this example how we have to approach this subject for our preparation Plato has talked about philosopher king at length when we'll study it I'll explain you everything related to philosopher king I can summarize it now that anyone who is well versed into state craft okay reason who reasons right like sam rightly said reason as his soul so reason through reason you arrive at right conclusion right observations not because of biases through human reason right so someone who is well read well versed into state craft who is having good advisors only he can be able to he can reason well from others right so this is what plato advises his philosopher king now if you are to uh, write about plato's philosopher king everyone will write the more or less the same thing what uh, reason is to be given importance he has to be very well crafted in uh, state craft and so on and so forth experienced uh, good uh, group of advisors to advise him his deputies so on and so forth can you quote a live example that would be you know icing on the cake and that would again give you a good mark like if i talk about ayatollah khomeini have you heard this name anyone who has heard about ayatollah who is he sam iran okay heaven has answered it rightly so ayatollah is a good example of philosopher king i am not favoring ayatollah okay i'm just according to the definition of plato's philosopher king ayatollah would fit into that category did you understand that because he is well versed into his learnings that is required in iran iran is a theocratic state right shia uh, sharia law is there shia version of sharia law the second islamic state after the islamic revolution first one is of course pakistan so he knows his jurisprudence he knows what is his state craft he is very well versed into it so he can be an example of philosopher king so when you talk about philosopher king when you write about if you mention ayatollah khomeini of course it's a thumbs up second example i would give you uh, i wonder if you have heard his name dr karan singh how many of you have just a yes or no would suffice 
Dr. Karan Singh? None of you. JNK, right, right, right. Krishna, you got it. Uh, he is a very senior Congress leader. He is the son of Maharaja Hari Singh. And he was sent to Rajya Sabha. And what is the term of Rajya Sabha for an MP? Six years. Again, Krishna, very, very well said. So, Anu, any question? Of course. So, when six years of Dr. Karan Singh was completed into Rajya Sabha, and he is such a senior leader that he is now into sannyas mode okay so everyone knew that he's 80 plus 85 87 something like that so he's not coming back in the parliament and a very seasoned politician so the union law minister of that time this happened i guess three years back mr ravi shankar prasad he stood up and he was uh, giving a speech and he said that when i talk about dr karan singh when i uh, when I am giving this farewell speech, the minister, the senior minister from the current government rose up and he wanted to give a tribute to Dr. Karan Singh, a very healthy parliamentary practice. So he said that I'm reminded of Plato's philosopher king, which I studied in my college during masters in political science. Okay. And then he said, how, what is, he explained very briefly, what is Plato's philosopher king? And then he said, how Karan Singh fits into that category? So you see live examples. And if you write after uh, when you are discussing Plato's philosophy, you say that the union, ho uh, union law minister, Mr. Prasad, attributed Dr. Karan Singh as Plato's philosopher king. That would be, trust me, very impeccable. No one is going to write these things. Do you see how you get edge in your exam? Huh? But for that, you have to be very vigilant, very observant, very well read. Don't worry, I'll be providing you with all these inputs. Nothing to worry about. So the, the idea, the, the message that I want to convey to you all is it's a very, very uh, interesting subject. And this subject cannot be learned through books and notes. There has to be discussion, there has to be feedback from your side to me. I cannot proceed to next topic until all of you have understood what I'm talking, what I'm teaching. So please understand that it has to, I, I need feedback from you people that there are questions, there are uh, issues that you have that maybe some uh, counter questions you have most welcome nothing nothing would uh, uh, be discouraged in my class but you have to learn this way through interactions only it's not like i'll give you a set of this thick notes pdf files and you will mug it up uh, cram it up and then vomit in your exam no that's not going to happen because this is a very practical paper Okay, this exam is very practical. This is a very contemporary thing. And contemporary things cannot be learned by mere cramming up of things. You have to involve yourself into it. Again, a word of caution over here. Uh, this subject is so interesting that you at times become over engrossed into things. Don't do that. Do not try to be a political analyst. Listen to them on Rajya Sabha TV. Do not aspire to be like them. Do not try to be a scholar in political science. Leave it to your teachers. We are done with our exams, right? You have to appear for your exam. You have to get good marks. So there is a limit beyond which you will not go. There's a threshold that you will not break. That is why I said no to books. Because once you get into that books, there is no, you know, the topics that we are talking about, there are people doing PhDs on this topic. They are writing theses on these topics in so many universities across India. Do not get overindulgent into all these things. That is why I said, the purpose of class is to enable you get very good marks in your main exam. Nothing beyond that. Okay. Of course, you will get an understanding. Of course, you, it will become very handy in your preparation and it will uh, uh, help you in your GS and SA as well. But not uh, uh, do not uh, engage yourself into endless discussions. Please prohibit these things. Refrain from these things. Do not uh, go online and write in some telegram group or don't 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 waste your time because you have a limited time and you have to study other things as well and knowledge is endless uh, learning goes on until we are alive uh, some questions share so learning will go on until we are alive but there is a fixed time frame under which you have to qualify your exam okay so any questions still here whatever i have uh, told you Anything that you have an alternative to it? Any query till here? Ha, I was about to come to it. I'm glad you asked this question, Krishna. Daily answer writing. See, you you will answer it yourself. Okay. There is this, uh, we are living into a pandemic time, right? 
we are lucky to have witnessed something that happens every 100 and 105 years rather unlucky so it has taken a toll on everything you all know that economy has been affected right you all agree to this that corona has affected the economy not only indian economy the world economy so if i ask you what are the effects of corona pandemic on indian economy and what are the steps taken by the government of india to tackle the same now how do you do daily answer writing what most of you do and what i discourage is that you open so many websites i don't want to name everyone you know the names better you see a list of daily questions 7 to 10 questions written there and at the uh, end of the question you are provided with a link you click on the link you land on some editorial page and you read that editorial and then you try to write an answer if civil services exam was so easy that by reading one editorial you can write one good answer it was the need to prepare in such a holistic way at all see these newspaper editorials can improve your answer but they are no substitute to your basic text do not indulge into daily answer writing for your optional you can do that for once a week okay because the questions are fixed and if anyone tries to innovate more questions there will be assignments from my side there is a purpose to it there will be assignments from my side but again re- re- going back to our original discussion that what is the effect of corona on economy and what are the steps that government of india is taking to tackle it this can be a very good question for me in in test series because it's a very worthy question and somewhere or the other in this main this question will be rephrased in some way can you write that answer by one editorial without knowing the basics of indian economy yes or no can you write that trust me you can you can't you have to know the basic pillars of the indian economy what are the central problems of an economy what are what is economic survey what is budget what is deficit what is difference between fiscal deficit revenue deficit monetized deficit why we are always into a deficit so what are the various welfare schemes what is taxation what is this that how will you write a good answer without knowing these things and don't you think making yourself aware of all these stuff requires some effort it requires days it requires a module of economy to be completed so half heartedly just one article and you think your answer would be at the level of main exam of upsc not going to happen at all okay so of course answer writing is very important but only when you have learned something you cannot write out of thin air you have to have the content before you attempt a question so it looks very lucrative that i am writing 10 answers a day right from day one trust me i think i can be more counterproductive you don't have the content and you want to write an answer on the basis of what one article and two articles not so easy the students not so easy otherwise everyone would be reading articles every day and getting everything out of it and then you have your answer ready articles are also important but only after you know certain things then only it can act vitamins and uh, minerals are important but can you survive without carbohydrate and protein no you cannot so please know the difference between these things do not go into what we call in hindi bhed chal everyone is doing it that's why i am also doing it everyone will not get selected in the exam okay now second important thing when do we write the answer after we are we have completed a particular topic like i have to start with political theory okay i'll explain you every facet of political theory different types of political theory there is a feminist version there is a marxist version there is a realist version we'll study everything in detail slides will be given to you pdf will be given to you and then i'll ask you to see the questions of last year and then i'll give some question from my side or i'll pick something from the last year itself you write that i'll give you a feedback on that this would be a complete preparation okay i hope this makes sense to you yes this is how we'll go into answer writing and i would advise the same thing for your general studies also to a large extent this is the 75th year of second world war right so this becomes very really important khilafat 1919 to 2019 last year so there can be a question in your main uh, in history maybe on khilafat maybe uh, in political science somewhere around uh, they, they you have to study these international institutions so the institutions that were formed post second world war to restore peace and stability and tranquility in the world uno being one of them so what has been there working in which context they were formed this can be a good question 
but can you write about this uh, based on one example you have to know so many things about it you have to study you know, why league of the nation failed uh, why actually first world war started and how the second world war occurred 1914 to 1919 first world war 1939 to 1945 second world war what made a world fight two big world war within 30 years and then come to the solution and then from that perspective you have to analyze the working of un and other international institutions there has to be a frame of reference right you can say that un has acted like uh, uh, a very uh, when i see this who guy uh, whatever his name is i forgot i get angry that you have just uh, uh, let us down in this corona times you cannot uh, hold up china to accounts but then who cannot be dismissed hiv aids other type of pandemic they have done human service right so there has to be a perspective it's very easy to criticize an institution by one point of reference i am asking you to develop a relative point of reference so working of international institutions post cold war cannot be written in a very good way until you know what caused events before that holistic approach right there is again some super cyclone being coming so you have to understand entire geomorphology and climatology to write that answer regarding cyclones and everything and again one more thing when you study political science there is this famous uh, epw have you heard economic and political weekly anyone has heard about this uh, magazine sam are you reading it good don't ha huh. don't don't read that don't read that see try to understand what you are aiming for you are aiming for india's top post job you will be a part of state right how would state function in an optimum way if one of it part turns against it can it it can never happen right there are certain uh, uh, sources that are hyper critical of the government do not get swayed by these things i am not asking you to completely toe the government line no your questions are like critically examine at times you have to be critical but on policy and you have to suggest the alternative please always remember that you are not writing an op-ed that these are the problems where is the solution a civil services service servant is supposed to come up with the solutions so please provide conclude your answers anything in gs and in, especially in your political science especially in your inter government and politics uh, futuristic statements or to this i have told you in accelerating uh, previously also so don't get majorly influenced by uh, something that is very very critical of uh, i'll give an exam- example here uh, you all have heard about caa citizenship amendment act yes or no okay so what happens in ca there were uh, protests all across india against the same right or wrong if i ask you do not give me moral science lecture this is not paper for ethics this is political science optional sound like a political science student whether those protests were right or wrong not from a theory point of view okay okay now see how 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 we have to uh, the house is divided some people say wrong some people say right hari singh this full protest was okay how do you protest when you study indian constitution in great details okay when you study it in great details you see uh, okay i got the essence of the class ha ah. so constitution of india confers certain rights to all of us correct part 3 fundamental rights six fundamental rights speech and expression being one of them and i have already told you during ncert is that none of our fundamental rights or for that matter any legal or constitutional right is absolute in nature all of them are qualified right there are reasonable restrictions imposed oh when we study indian government politics part b of paper a there we see that when a law is passed by the indian parliament it is not it is not supposed to be on the onus of the prime minister or the ruling party it is upon the parliament of india because the opposition also sits in the same parliament right 543 lok sabha mps 303 from the current ruling party what about 543 minus 303 opposition also sits in the same parliament and when the parliament passes a law it is no longer an act of executive it is an act of legislature how many of you understood this difference between an act of executive and an act of legislature it's not concerned with a particular
particular party or a particular person or anyone it is something that is done by the indian parliament you cannot hold indian parliament to ransom still if you don't agree with the law okay fine everything said and done you don't agree with the law then the constitution gives you certain provisions to express your uh, whatever your concern is go in a case in the supreme court of india actually yes this is what i said and this is what aditya typed that approach the honorable supreme court get it cancelled by the supreme court or there are certain mps who do not favor this law ask them to bring up no confidence motion and let the government fall or you say that when i will become i will be the government i'll scrap this law come fight electoral politics only three laws have been passed in the joint session of india parliament the third one was pota atal bihari vajpay passed it prevention of terrorist act atal bihari vajpay was was defeated in 2004 dr manmohan singh became the prime minister of india the first thing he did was to cancel pota perfectly constitutional i am not even going into the merits of the whether that was right or wrong or moral or ethical perfectly constitutional you see how things work out in a constitutional democracy you have to take this line only you do not become a damn activist right shouting at the top of your voice jindabad and murda no please don't okay take what the law says take the legal constitutional route there are certain limits to the democracy nothing is absolute in nature in a democracy so either you approach the apex court or you approach those mps who can bring up no confidence motion let the government or you yourself become a part of the government right the current ruling party they had two seats in 1984 lok sabha elections do you know this and from 1984 to 2020 they are having 303 seats and this party was formed on certain issues and they are fulfilling these issues very rapidly right this is what the beauty of a constitutional democracy is how can you how can you just say, call it unconstitutional and sort attach all sort of adjectives do not take this line in your exam try to understand why would government want you to be uh, join the services when you have you don't have the liberty of a columnist and that's not correct also things have been framed things have been changed a 42nd amendment was brought by indira gandhi janata party brought 44th amendment both of them are correct how do we say that this is right and this is wrong no i'm not i'm not telling you to be in on the side of a particular party or an individual at least be on the side of the indian constitution express it through what the constitution provides us and this is what will make the difference if you take two critical line you are not going to do very well in your exam is this thing clear to all of you now any questions here nobody uh, can you tell me your name nobody has asked that what if we don't trust judiciary then whom do you trust janata of the naxalites venkat okay there is nothing like don't trust the judiciary if you don't trust judiciary you judiciary you know, it, it it functions there is an appellate uh, jurisdiction Uh, lower court higher court the apex court even if the supreme court says something gives a verdict you do not agree you can again file a petition that will be heard by a larger bench which will have more than the uh, judges who were there in the previous case so if you don't trust judiciary then you are not trusting the system my cut that is not a very uh, encouraging sign you have to trust uh, judiciary functions as per the constitution right not like you cannot trust everyone trust has to be there even if you don't agree you can criticize judiciary as yes. you can differ with a judgment do not try to attach motive to a judgment that will at- attract what prashant bhushan has been slapped with cut up of court so these are the things that are very basic things and we have to keep in our mind while we are studying for political science now one more thing uh, these were the practical things that i told you about and uh, i am not going to repeat these things because i hope you have uh, understood these things second thing uh, in paper 1 part a where you study everything i hope if you see right from uh, political theory to ideologies to wpt that is western political thought to ipt that is indian political uh, rights liberty everything is there now these this is actually you know pure political science indian government and politics is an applied part of political science the core theories are there in part a so we have to understand these things with crystal clarity any doubt there will make you you know fiddle in your paper b also 
and in your ir as well i told you you have to attach you have to correlate things you connect your international relations with your political theory then you will get very good marks what is the realist theory what is the idealist theory what is the the prime minister of sweden says that we are the first country who are having feminist foreign policy okay she said this nirupama roy heard, heard this name anyone who has heard this name mrs nirupama roy none of you uh, who is she if you are reading newspaper you will definitely know because she writes a lot she was an ifs officer she is retired now yes sir you are right and she has also served as a uh, ambassador to in, of india to countries like pakistan i guess the last assignment was to usa so she also wrote a beautiful piece on this feminist theory which i shall share with you when i'll uh, we'll cover these things so again we see theory is given theory is there how do you apply into what is happening around like this is what you connect your practical things with the static part only then you get because you know if i ask you uh, we are moving back to one party system this we have to study we are moving back to one party system and uh, in fact there was the question in your exam that uh, voting pattern uh, voting pattern india has changed we will come to these things hari uh, ravi will come to these things ambassador high commissioner consular general everything please uh, uh, because then i have to tell you many more things which i am not doing right now i am telling you about the subject and everything venkat uh, but you are appearing for this exam so you have to there is no other way if you say that you don't trust judiciary you don't trust government then i am afraid that this is not a very good stance to take because then what is the alternative if i ask you the fact that you are preparing for this exam and you have to appear for a exam that would be con- conducted by a constitutional body upsc that in itself says that you have to agree okay trust is a very subjective term how much to what extent you don't trust or to what extent you trust and which judiciary are you talking about from the lowest uh, court the session and district court to the high court to the apex court everyone to the Uh, constitutional bench that are hearing the judgments right now all of them if the answer is yes then of course you can attract contempt okay so coming back to the theory 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 stuff that i was discussing that uh, uh, voting pattern there, there, there was this question in your exam that the voting pattern in india has shifted so any even a layman who is reading even a, a regional newspaper maybe in hindi or maybe in some other language in in punjabi in punjab maybe in telugu in your state so he or she can also have a view on how the voting pattern in india has changed or uh, is india moving back to a one party system right but as political science option students what will you write that you will not uh, the the answer will not look like that anyone uh, a layman has written this is what will bring the difference okay that how do you approach that particular question is there some relevant theory that you can pitch into this okay is there now two terms we are often hearing right now constitutionalism and constitutional morality okay so how they come into effect when we discuss voting pattern and the, the, the limitations on the functioning of the government or are we going back to one party system and it is resulting into what we popularly call majoritarianism so so you know paper a of part paper 1 part a of paper 1 is most important because the application part 1/4 of your optional is paper uh, uh, part a of paper 1 but its extension is there inevitably seen in all the three fourth part remaining three fourth part so please first of all we'll start with paper 1 uh, uh, and part a of paper 1 and maximum attention i want here because if we do not understand the political theories and ideologies and thinkers you will always feel like you are studying an alien subject and again you cannot cram this subject and this is the bad thing that you cannot cram this subject and vomit it in your exam and the good thing is if you understand this subject you don't have to do even multiple revisions if you understand it that's it you don't have to do even multiple revisions of this subject so 
clarity has to be there now you can ask me questions whatever doubts you have regarding whatever we have discussed and what should be the ideal approach any any doubt you you have please ask me sources i have sent you follow them notes and slides will be provided to you give them highest priority newspapers you have to study any small or big doubt you have please ask me. of course uh, see hari this is one of the again uh, very frequent questions that i have been asked to be have to uh, read subra ranjan's note subra ma'am's note see i have i have of course seen those notes i have seen notes of many other teachers the notes of any teacher is you know whosoever is teaching and uh, teaching for so many years i am no one to even uh, adversely comment on that but then merely reading notes and then uh, you think that it will serve the purpose to approach it there is a holistic pattern if there are notes there is a class there are tests there are revisions that is how it is done and when uh, i am involved with you then i i there is a method that i would approach i want you to analyze things rather than merely cram it up and go there see any notes you read whether shubhra ranjan's note or when if andrew hewood gives you his notes to that can work only when you expect things that will be asked in the exam from those study material what if there is a pattern shift and what if uh, they ask you more practical things how will you write those answers that can only come vishnu i'll come to your question please let me answer this that can only come when you have a better understanding one 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 thing that you tell me sam and again come to you. Uh, his name is hari hari you tell me uh, indian president right i give you my notes on indian president how the president is appointed what are the powers what are the functions the president can be impeached okay i give you uh, 10 or uh, 100 and 1000 questions on these topics that i just mentioned and also notes on that and i don't teach you anything and you understand everything from what i have given you you practice those 1000 questions but if there is 1000 and first question you won't be able to answer that and if there is anything other than those notes that have been asked in the again cannot answer that so the thing is to develop a conceptual clarity rather than mugging up notes and going in the mad race of uh, solving all the tests and these are also important but as i told you vitamins and minerals cannot replace carbohydrate and proteins right so of course uh, do not go after any notes at all whatever will be provided will be by me in your group and that would be more than sufficient you can see previous year question and get the assurance now i'll come to the next question uh, in the same order does grammatical error in answer writing is capable or there will be any penalty on marks offered to us in political science see uh, it's always good to be a purist which means uh, better to avoid grammatical errors they do not uh, usually cut marks on grammar but uh, there can be uh, i'll just give me a minute i need to plug my charger else my laptop would shut down just one minute yes so of course uh, it's good to write correct grammar you won't be penalized for uh, writing it but then why to write uh, incorrect and how will you frame sentences if your grammar is not in place so if that's a concern better we need to work on that and in our course of preparation for upsc because english will be the language in which all of us will uh, interact with each other you will be studying in english you will be reading english newspapers only so there will be an improvement you will write your answers into english so that will be improved not to worry majorly on grammar part there is nothing like they put your marks on grammar now another question sam has a question so i will just tell us what he is. ha huh, yes i'll start with political theory this was the introduction of orientation second class tomorrow would be on political theory what do you mean by political theory what are the different political theories the introduction part of course of course that will happen once i complete a topic i'll first ask for your doubts and then you will see the questions i'll give you the question of this year see if you are able to write these questions or not 
Of course, no time material will be provided to you. Don't worry about that. Krishna Kant has another question. Should we study political articles also for the Rajasthan political action? There was, ha, huh, very good question, Krishna. Now, what is a political article? Okay, political article. I tell you that. Uh, I'll give you this example lecture. That is Thun political condition. Sachin is engaging into political opportunism. Ashok Gehloth is uh, being the old guard who is loyal to the first family and they are not letting any new talent. This is political article. What is our concern here? Tell me. The, our concern is that what happens when a seasoned along with his supporter goes to a particular resort. Schedule 10 of Indian constitution. Can someone tell me about it? It talks about, come on, I told this to you in NCRT's defection, right? So any act of Sachin Pilot and his MLAs will that attract provisions of Schedule 10 of the Indian Constitution, defection law would attract. What if it attracts? Then they qualified. What happened when MLA are disqualified in between the uh, assembly term? There is a by-election, right? So these are the things that are of concern to us. Not what the opportunism part or the politics. No, no, don't go into that direction. I'm trying to bring you into what you have to study. For example, political articles are to be avoided. Krishna, did you understand what is that? Santosh, I'm coming to your answer. Krishna, did you understand? And all, Asha, you all get uh, the answer. Anti defection. See, there are no theories. There are constitutional provisions. Anti defection law has some constitutional provision. Your question is about IGP. Indian government and politics. Your question was not about political theory. The example that I gave of uh, uh, voting pattern and uh, one party uh, majority, that is about political theory, majoritarianism and so on and so forth. So now there was a question. Uh, Santosh, I have zero knowledge about political science. That is great. I told you it's very easy to write on a clean slate. I would have been worried if you knew something about political science. So don't worry about those. So would starting this option subject be better or should I complete my NCRT for No, no, you can always start this. I was not able to attend the previous classes. So no, 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 no. Uh, NCRTs do not deal with political science. Though they call it, but they do not deal with political science. There is a very uh, microscopic uh, related to political science with our uh, NCRTs. Uh, if you uh, want to see something, because I'll be taking references from that. Uh, class 11th political theory. The book on political theory, very small reference I'll be giving to you because what we are covering here is uh, much beyond that. So no need to worry if you have not done NCRTs. If you have done it, it's always better. It's good, better. But then if you have not done it, there is nothing that you need to worry about. I hope your curiosity is shortened. Sumana has asked, sir, can I start with Lakshmi Khan without reading NCRTs? I couldn't complete them before, unfortunately. Not advisable, but... Uh, Give it a try. You can. Of course, uh, there is no bar. You can, of course, uh, do that. And we will be covering IGP, right? So all the constitution will be covered. There. So try reading it on your own. No worries about that. Okay, Sumana. Yes, Vishnu, ask. I am not an idealist, uh, uh, Hari. So I will give you a practical answer. Uh, the schedule that I have prepared is about your paper one. And I'll take, uh, I guess... Uh, I'll share the lecture plan, okay? So things will be more clear to all of you. So ask me this someday later because I'll share the lecture plan with you. I've not uh, entirely prepared it. Some topics are there. So I'll share it with you. And uh, it takes uh, four months it has to take. Three to four months, not before, not before that. It cannot happen. There was some more question, I guess. Yes. From which standpoint should we answer government or personal? Why there should be a difference? Why you need to always contradict your government? When you are expected to join the government? If government is doing something illegal, there are several mechanisms that can take care of it, which, which we shall discover when we progress with our classes. This is for all of you. If government is doing something that it is not supposed to do, illegal, immoral, unconstitutional, there are several mechanisms that can take care of it, which we shall gradually discover as our classes progress. You don't have to worry about that. Of course, there are things that can be done in a better way. Like if I ask you about uh, India's uh, international uh, relations, the policy that India has adopted toward Middle East or towards China, 
of course there can be an impact okay or how india could have handled covid 19 so far so good but of course it can be better go for positive criticism rather than blabbering just for the sake of it do not turn your activist mode on ever that would do no good to you we will be competing with aspirants ram i'll come to it yes uh, i heard this this where did you read this yaar yeah? yeah. are you reading uh, bar and bench okay 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 i'll come to it i'll come to it but this is something that uh, uh, you know okay first let me ask this we will be competing with aspirants who have degree in the same subject how should we strategize for example to all that's not an advantage why don't you get this what is your name i completed my ug and pg from here itself delhi university and i know how i completed it i am teaching students who are coming from very very good colleges they are rankers they are toppers how does one top in indian universities sorry if i hurt sensibilities of any topper sitting here but i'll keep doing that because there are fixed set of questions okay there is a 10 year a set of question any university you go to first question is like all answers are all questions are compulsory which is divided into two parts then answer any two second yahi hota hai na this is what happens the length of your answer sheet is directly proportional to the marks that you get so if you are competing with people who have degrees don't be scared of degrees degree does not essentially translate into content and knowledge okay degree i repeat does not always translate into content and knowledge i have seen most of them are very confused they have little understanding and little knowledge is always dangerous so don't worry about degrees and everything it's always good that you don't know anything and these prejudices will not work if that was the case then upsc would have said that all those who are having an mphil or a phd in pol science need take pol science right do they say this, something like this they don't do they say that someone who has scored first division all through his or her life will only appear for this exam they don't because they also know how uh this award exams right not discrediting anyone but what i said is a fact that degree and does not always necessarily task into content so don't get scared of that you will always be par excellence that is the purpose of the class see don't be biased towards the party or something ideally civil servants are supposed to be politically neutral venkat okay civil servants are supposed to be politically neutral but then how can a thinking person be neutral right <laughs> when you go and cast your vote which is your duty aren't you bi- Tell me. So, do not announce from your group. So, do you know that uh, when you vote for a particular party, that's a privilege, right? You're not supposed to blow it out from your rooftop. Keep it to yourself. You have your own objective criteria of weighing something, what is good and correct. This is worth voting for. Of course, we are into a parliamentary democracy based on political party. So, I am sure that you cannot favor every point of one particular party and cannot disfavor every point of any other political party there has to be a mix so this thing that you have to remember see uh, and coming back to ram charan where did you read this first you tell me because this i read uh, in par and bench journal actually they address uh, supreme court judge your your lordship it's good you are fan of cgi there is nothing wrong in it no issues of course they are these are people the prime minister the president the cgi we all should take inspiration from these people irrespective of the party or uh, group that they belong to okay when the president of india you know he is the highest constitutional force ha huh, the the practice is that they address them as your your lordship again uh, if i go into it there will be, i'll need one more module uh, gp will come into play we function uh, where you know the british concept and the american concept discuss this thing so uh, right now please uh, don't don't ask for details it's a very long discussion anything related to uh, preparation pointers anything else so i try to introduce this sub to you what your approach should be for this very subject what are the do's and don'ts and uh, sources revision classes pdfs that's it books i told you still if you want i have suggested you some titles I think Molly and you have do you all know O.P. Goba and there is Brand Nelson from Western Political Thought. There is we are meta for in political thought. Don't bother yourself with all these things. You will be very very confused. And this is a very interdisciplinary subject. So whatever we learn here, it will come very handy in other subjects as well. And uh, also 
uh, you can use this you know uh, one more thing one more thing one more word of caution oh how can i forget this please listen carefully uh, often what i have seen when uh, people from political science optional they are writing uh, something in general studies or essay according to plato according to karl marx no your general study will not be corrected by a professor of political science the person would be a generalist not a specialist your essay paper will not be corrected by a political science professor okay do not quote your subject expert into general studies and essays you don't know what if the person is a uh, uh, the person is maybe a physics professor or a sociology or a psychology or an anthropology he will not understand and if he does not understand you think he will he or she will give you marks he will just straight away cut it down and there is nothing that you can do there will be no need result you know this upsc will not show you answer sheet come out may it's not your school or college exam and nothing would work here no rti nothing upsc says that it is our intellectual property right we do not this was said by upsc to one of the rtis when uh, some people asked how they arrive at cut off in prelims so don't take panga with upsc second thing uh, do not quote your subject experts according to uh, gramsci or according to don't do bhiku parekh not into a, quote these people like uh, the public intellectuals like we will uh, we will be quoting uh, yogendra yadav what about him he and prashant bhushan are the founder of uh, uh, swaraj abhiyan so yes 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 so uh, he is a uh, renowned cephalologist who is a cephalologist who goes for electoral analysis uh, exit polls and though he is often wrong but he has uh, we need to quote him ram guha india after gandhi the famous uh, historian or uh, uh, i don't want to tell that so we can quote such people who are not into a very uh, political scientist right according to rajni kothari you write in your js many a political science person knows who is a rajni kothari right you can quote public intellectuals you can quote uh, great people uh, swami vivekanand you know we uh, abdul kalam you can quote these people do not quote your political science subject experts into essay and your uh, general studies I'm not going to do any good to you okay this is a caution because political science students have this uh, vast amount of knowledge and quotations that they get and they tend to use it everywhere use it where necessary use it where required so this was an attempt from my side to acquaint you with everything related to this subject so that uh, it comes handy when you prepare you have to keep these things in mind do not divert from these things because now what will happen from tomorrow onwards i am teaching you this was not teaching class this was just an orientation with all of you about because as i rightly uh, guess that these are the questions that you will ask because every year the student ask same question anywhere i go whether i am uh, in your city or in delhi or anywhere in north india also same set of questions so i thought that it's better to answer these questions to clear some doubts to clear your confusions and to show you the path whether this is the path that we need to tread of course i'll be there in you with you on this journey so let us make it all productive for all of us and as i told you the only uh, thing how i wait then when you come out of your exam you should not abuse me rather praise me so this is how if uh, you are happy with when you come from your examination hall my purpose is served okay i have done my job i can take pride in what i have done so this is what i intend to do over here did you understand today's session the importance of uh, today's session or did it become too boring because we did not study anything from subject anyone tell me please so please keep these things in mind tomorrow i'll start with political theory what is the meaning how this theory uh, political theories have evolved over a period of time how eras have had their influence on political theories different eras no theory can uh, yes it is better to know the popsy before we step in so it was very interesting okay aditya yeah this is what i also supposed and that's why such a it's already 9:15 so such a prolonged discussion today so it was worth it i thought i think and i was able to convey you what i wanted to tomorrow onwards we'll start with the academic stuff and uh, see you all tomorrow political theory we'll complete it tomorrow try to complete it if not then i'll take uh, maybe half an hour or more for to complete okay so let us call it a day we all will meet tomorrow same time okay.